Hi everyone and welcome to Biology Professor. Today we're going to be talking about the structure of the nucleus, so focusing on those things that are inside the nucleus. Before we launch into that, I want to make sure you know about something new that I'm doing and that is providing board notes. So you can check for a link in the description below. There will be a link to a drive folder where you can get a PDF of the final board. So the final board with all of the blanks filled in for all of my recent videos, you can get them for free. Just check out that link in the description. Uh, also make sure that you subscribe for more biology study videos. Now let's go ahead and get started. So in the nucleus, we're focusing on things like the nuclear lamina, the nuclear matrix, the nucleoplasm. Here I have drawn a diagram of the nucleus. Of course, this is situated within the, the larger cell. So outside of here, there's cytoplasm and other organelles of the cell, but we're focusing on the nucleus. Um, I have numbered various parts of the nuclear structure, and I'll be referring to them as we go through the notes. So first, let's kind of take a look at what's on the outside of the nucleus, um, making up the, the nuclear boundary, and that is this membrane system. So we've got an outer membrane, an inner membrane, um, a space in the middle called the perinuclear space, and it's studded with nuclear pores. So let's put that into context here. The nuclear envelope, that is um, another sometimes more formal name for the nuclear membrane. The nuclear envelope, it separates the nucleoplasm that's in here from the cytoplasm that is outside the nucleus. It consists of two membranes, as I said, the uh, outer one and the inner one. Two membranes punctured by thousands of nuclear pores. And those are drawn in red. So thousands of these pores around this big sort of spherical nucleus. And these pores are made of large, hollow protein complexes. So these pores right here, they're made of protein, they're hollow. That allows things to go from the cytoplasm into the nucleus and from inside the nucleus back out into the cytoplasm. So those pores do span both membranes and have like a lot of regulatory function. Also, I mentioned in between the outer membrane and the inner membrane, there is like a small kind of um, compartment called the perinuclear space. Okay. Um, I also want to point out a few more things before we move on, and that is that this outer membrane is continuous with the endoplasmic reticulum, which I'm abbreviating as ER. So I've drawn that a little bit here. That outer membrane is continuous, meaning connected to the membrane uh, system that makes up the endoplasmic reticulum. So that's another way in which things can kind of go from uh, the nucleus into the endoplasmic reticulum. And then also these nuclear pores, I really already said this, but I want to make sure that I write it down for you, and that is that they regulate entry into and exit out of the nucleus. So now we'll go on to five through eight. Five through eight here, we've got the nucleoplasm, the nuclear lamina, the nuclear matrix, and then up here, the nuclear matrix proteins. So let's talk about those now. The nucleoplasm contains the nuclear lamina, these are composed of lamin proteins. Now, lamin proteins are a type of intermediate filament. I do have another video on the cytoskeleton where I talk about microtubules, um, microfilaments, and intermediate filaments. And so if you want to learn more about those, you can check out that video. So the nuclear lamina is composed of lamin proteins that they uh, support the inner membrane, they anchor the pore complexes. They have a few other things that they do too. In addition to that mechanical support, and by mechanical support, I'm talking about this right here, supporting the inner membrane, anchoring those nuclear pore complexes. They also, and this nuclear lamina is these kinds of green crisscross fibers that go around uh, supporting that inner membrane. They also help to regulate a few very, very important processes for the cell. They help to regulate cell division. Remember that during cell division, during mitosis, 
you've got the, the chromatin, it condenses into chromosomes, they have to be separated. The nucleus, the nuclear envelope has to dissolve for that to happen and then reform later, and the nuclear lamina helps with that process. Um, the nuclear lamina also regulates uh, you know, DNA replication as well. So it's not just a supportive function, it's also got these regulatory functions. So very important is the nuclear lamina. Uh, then the nucleoplasm also contains the nuclear matrix. Remember that the nuclear matrix is basically in here and um, it's, it is similar in function to the um, to the cytosol. So the same way that in the cell you've got the cytosol and sort of um, the cytoplasm, all of the, the cytoskeleton that's there, the nuclear matrix acts in a sort of similar fashion. I will say that it's a lot more dynamic than the cytoplasm um, and there's still a lot of questions about kind of how exactly it works. Um, but yeah, so the nuclear matrix is in there. The nucleoplasm is also known as the nucleosol, okay? So the nucleoplasm is in there, um, and that is that is sort of made up of the nuclear matrix and the nuclear matrix proteins. Uh, now let's go on to 9 through 10. This is kind of bringing us to the end of our, of our discussion on the nuclear structure. And here we're talking about the DNA and the nucleolus, or nucleolus, it's got two pronunciations there. So the DNA and the nucleus exists in two different forms. So the DNA can be loose with transcription activity. This is called euchromatin. Or it can be condensed and inactive, so not currently uh, supporting transcription. And that is called heterochromatin. So just as a reminder, when we're talking about transcription activity, remember that this involves the central dogma. So we've got DNA is used as a template to make RNA, and the particular type of RNA that's used as a template to make protein, that's the messenger RNA. And so this right here is the central dogma. I have another video on the central dogma if you want to check that out. But it's just the idea that um, information in the cell flows from DNA through RNA to protein. And the two processes that link this are transcription, that's the making of the RNA from the DNA template, and translation, the making of the protein from the RNA template. And so this right here, I'm gonna kind of circle this arrow, that is where transcription is taking place. So when we say loose DNA, it's loose, it's open, um, it's available for, uh, for the polymerase, the RNA polymerases to get in there and to transcribe the DNA to make that transcript that can then be used to make the protein, of course. I'll also add that the transcripts that are made during transcription in the nucleus, they've got to get out into the cytoplasm to find a ribosome uh, to uh, be translated. And how do they get out of the nucleus? Through the nuclear pore complexes. Okay, and then the other thing I want to point out within our nucleus is this right here. In the nucleus, there's like a dark staining region that you can see is like a darker um, kind of region within the nucleus, and that is the nucleolus or the nucleolus. Again, you've got those two pronunciations, but that is the site of our RNA, ribosomal RNA synthesis and ribosome assembly. So that's the nucleolus. Um, and so that brings us to the end of our discussion on the structure of the nucleus. Make sure you grab the board notes from the link below. Make sure you hit subscribe. And I hope to see you uh, next time for more biology study videos. Thank you for watching Biology Professor. Bye.